Hi everyone, welcome to Spark Spread. Today we are going to be digging into full self-driving from a financial perspective. This is a very big deal for Tesla investors and has been the cornerstone of my investment thesis in Tesla for the last year and a half. In fact, when I put out my first public valuation model last year, I forecast 2020 EPS of $3.41, split adjusted, which was more than three times higher than the average Wall Street estimate at the time. The gap between my forecast and the Wall Street consensus figures was entirely driven by my assumptions on full self-driving revenue. At the risk of sounding arrogant, I was right to model it out in the level of detail that I did, because FSD has been quietly driving much of Tesla's recent financial performance. Through the third quarter of 2020, Tesla has already blown past the full year analyst forecasts by posting $1.43 in adjusted earnings per share. This is despite the fact that Tesla faced massive headwinds in Q2 with the Fremont factory shutdown driven by coronavirus concerns. And with Q4 looking to be an absolute blowout quarter, it's very clear that Wall Street analysts missed the mark horribly by not taking the time to understand the financial implications of FSD. Despite the proverbial egg on their face, I don't believe the analysts have learned their lesson by breaking out FSD revenues separately in their valuation models. The average 2021 EPS target of $3.31 once again looks laughably low to me, and I know most analysts are not modeling out FSD correctly. In fact, Alex Potter of Piper Sandler is the only analyst I'm aware of who actually updated his model in 2020 to account for FSD separately. Once he went through this exercise, he increased his price target on Tesla by a staggering 150%. With this background in mind, it seems very clear to me that a detailed understanding of FSD is necessary to fully grasp the Tesla investment thesis. So today, we're going to dive into the details on FSD, including take rates, deferred revenue, and future projections. Now, it would take a very long time to fully cover the sources I'm using to establish the estimates. There are a lot of footnotes from Tesla's financial disclosures, as well as one-off comments from the earnings calls, which go into this analysis. I'd probably bore you all to sleep if I tried to go through this complicated accounting treatment in detail. Now, while I won't be going over all the details, this topic can still be a bit dense if you don't have an accounting or finance background. But understanding the details is really important. We'll start by establishing the building blocks of FSD revenue, so that you can comprehend the key drivers. And with that baseline established, we'll turn our attention to the future and explain why I believe FSD revenue and Tesla's margins are poised to explode. With that in mind, let's take a minute to make sure we're all on the same page about what we know today. First, let's start with the obvious. FSD is a software option priced at $10,000 today. It is available as an option for purchase with all of Tesla's new vehicles and as an upgrade option for almost all Teslas sold historically. Because it is a software upgrade, it is almost pure margin for Tesla, meaning it can generate massive amounts of cash flow and earnings if enough consumers opt for the upgrade. Tesla has been less than forthcoming with financial information about FSD, so much of what we do know today, we have to piece together to get the whole story. Under the Rules for Generally Accepted Accounting Principles, or GAAP, Tesla can only book a portion of the $10,000 FSD purchase price as revenue today, while the remaining balance is categorized as a liability, called deferred revenue. In Tesla's case, the full functionality of FSD, including automatic driving on city streets, has not been rolled out to all customers yet, so it still owes its customers that capability. Once it finally delivers on that promise, Tesla will be able to remove the liability from its balance sheet, and in so doing, recognize that amount as income. On the Q1 2020 earnings call, CFO Zach Kirkhorn disclosed that Tesla's FSD price was only about 50% recognizable as gap revenue. In late 2019, we also learned that Tesla had a roughly 27% take rate at that time. Now, since the point of this video is to estimate FSD revenues, let's take a minute and make sure that we are all familiar with the formula that we'll be using. Uh, starting with the FSD cash intake, you simply take the unit sales in a given quarter, you multiply that by the take rate in a given quarter, and the price in a given quarter, and that gets you the amount of cash which Tesla has received from FSD sales. You then take that FSD cash sales amount, or FSD cash intake as we've shown it here, and you multiply that by the percent which is gap recognizable as revenue to get the estimated FSD revenue, and that is the amount that will hit the income statement. The table shown here presents the math we just discussed as it applies to the three quarters which we have historical financial information for. Applying the 27% take rate across each quarter and multiplying that by the actual amount of deliveries which were reported by Tesla gets to an FSD sales quantity amount in the third row. 
We then multiply that by the average FSD price to get an FSD cash intake, which is the first yellow line you see here. Uh, so assuming the 50% recognizable amount, which was disclosed by Zach Kirkhorn, we can then get to an approximation of the FSD revenue, which would be hitting Tesla's financial statements in each quarter. As you can see, Tesla's growth in vehicle sales leads to a corresponding growth in estimated FSD revenue. However, this is a slightly oversimplified version of the math. Because Tesla has continued to release new features, such as driving on city streets, the company has continued to deliver the functionality that is still owed to its customers. In Q1, we learned that this deferred revenue balance related to FSD accounted for a $600 million liability. In subsequent quarters, Tesla also disclosed the amounts of deferred revenue which were recognized. These amounts were $48 million in Q2 and just $10 million in Q3. With these additional kernels of information, we can actually hone in more precisely on the percent of FSD revenue which is recognizable. I won't bore you with the math, but I estimate this percent recognizable should have increased from about 50% in Q1 to 54% in Q2 and 55% in Q3. Using these figures, we can now update our previous chart. You can see that with the recognition of deferred revenue and a higher percent recognizable as revenue, the amount of FSD revenue hitting Tesla's income statement increases even more rapidly. However, these figures are still too conservative. They leave out the upgrades to FSD from existing owners who did not opt for the software at the time of purchase. Most analysts do not account for upgrade sales, and I've even had some Tesla bulls tell me it's too aggressive to model out upgrades separately. But in my opinion, assuming zero upgrades by default, which is what most analysts do, is inherently wrong and overly conservative since we know some non-zero number of owners will upgrade each quarter. Now let's try to quantify this piece of FSD revenue. Since about three quarters of owners do not buy the upgrade, the FSD candidate pool, as I like to call it, is a very large and rapidly growing potential source of revenue. As of the end of Q3, I estimate the candidate pool stands at about 700,000 vehicles. With increasing functionality and the threat of further price hikes, some percentage of these owners will opt for the upgrade in each quarter. I suspect a 1% upgrade rate per quarter is a bit on the conservative side, but at least reasonable from a financial modeling perspective. This equates to roughly 7,000 additional upgrades in Q3, which is equivalent to a 5% increase in take rate. Now, adding this last piece in, we can see that the rate of growth of FSD is even more rapid. All right, so at this point, you could be forgiven for wondering why I have spent so much time in detail to discuss a $200 million line item. Sure, it's nice, and yes, it is pure margin, but for a company doing tens of billions of dollars annually in sales, does it really move the needle that much? Well, I believe it's about to move the needle in a big way. In fact, I believe this is about to go from $200 million per quarter, as we've shown here, to a shocking $1 billion per quarter on average over the next 12 months. This is not my dreams and wishes of what I hope might happen, but rather the result of thinking through each one of the variables that we've discussed here so far. We'll get into that detailed buildup later on, but for now, I want to leave you thinking about what the likely FSD take rate might be as of today, in Q4 2020. As a reminder, the last time we received confirmation from Tesla on the take rate was about one year ago, when a 27% take rate was disclosed at a private investor event. I believe it's highly likely that the take rate is now higher than this, and I have four points which I'd like to go over which support my case for a higher FSD take rate. First, just look at the functionality improvement. One year ago, FSD was essentially non-functional on city streets. The benefits of FSD were primarily just that you could let the car navigate from highway on-ramp to off-ramp, which is frankly not drastically better than many competitors' advanced driving assistance systems or ADAS systems. Today, in many geographies, however, FSD will recognize and respond to traffic lights and manage many surface street tasks. Also, the quote-unquote real FSD is finally out now, the result of a massive software rewrite. Initial reviews of the beta testers have been incredibly positive. Frankly, I'm just a bit blown away that cars driven by the general public are now capable of left turns, navigating around parked vehicles or pedestrians, and tackling roundabouts. It is very exciting, especially when you see the high rate of improvement on areas where the software has struggled in the past. With this much more compelling feature set poised to be in wide release soon, it seems highly likely to me that more customers will be opting for FSD. The second reason I think take rate is going up is because the numbers in Tesla's quarterly reports seem to be screaming that FSD revenue is up. I have pulled together this bar chart based on disclosures in the company's 10Qs. As we've already outlined, Tesla can't book the full amount of its FSD price, 
so the balance must be included as a deferred revenue liability. Note that in Q1, Tesla had $140 million of deferred credit revenues in this balance. So adjusting this out gives us $670 million. CFO Zach Kirkhorn also disclosed in Q1 that deferred revenue related to FSD was a bit over $600 million. So it does look like the vast majority of this figure is related to FSD. If people are buying FSD, this figure should be increasing, and indeed it is. Now I have tried to approximate take rates from these numbers by modifying them even further based on known recognition of deferred revenue. But ultimately, I think there is too much noise in these numbers to quantitatively validate take rates each quarter. But the main point remains that increases in the deferred revenue balance are supportive of continued strong FSD sales. Okay, and you can all breathe again. I will not be referring to the 10Q or anything remotely related to accounting from here on out. Point number three relates to model mix. Troy Teslik, who you should all be following if you're not already doing so, does great tracking on deliveries and production for Tesla. Troy has been tracking take rate by quarter and by vehicle going back to 2017. As of now, this information is only available for his patrons, and I'd recommend signing up if you're interested in this data and haven't done so already. But Troy has said publicly that take rate on Model Y has been higher than Model 3. So as Model Y becomes a bigger contributor to the overall product mix, overall take rate should increase as well. Finally, I think FSD price increases are a good indication that Tesla does not have concerns over take rate. Elon has long stated that he expects FSD price to increase over time, especially as new functionality is released and the software gets closer to enabling robo-taxis. As you can see, he's made good on that promise several times over the last two years. If you've ever taken Econ 101, you know that price increases should actually reduce demand. But in this case, the product has significantly improved as the price increases rolled out. While I don't expect Elon was actually charting out the optimal price based on Econ formulas, the string of consistent price increases does strongly suggest that demand is not an issue. And most compellingly, after FSD beta rolled out, we saw a $2,000 price increase, rather than the $1,000 increases we had seen previously. It takes some conviction to offer a $10,000 option, and I don't think Tesla would have raised the price by 25% if there had been demand concerns at the $8,000 price level. With these four data points in mind, and in looking at Tesla's outstanding growth in automotive gross margins, it seems likely to me that Tesla is somewhere around a 35% take rate as of Q3. Now that we've taken the time to establish some of the building blocks of the FSD revenue calculations, I want to walk through the projections of FSD revenue for the next several quarters. First, let's talk deferred revenue recognition. I estimate the current deferred revenue balance to be around $850 million, and I expect this full amount will be recognized at some point over the next 12 months. That's great news on its own, since $850 million is a very large number. But the other benefit of full recognition is that new sales of FSD will be about twice as profitable as they have been historically. In fact, slightly more than that, since the price also increased in Q4. In reality, it will likely be staggered, with a good chunk of recognition in Q4 if FSD beta rolls out across the US, and additional recognition in subsequent quarters when the complete feature suite is delivered globally. But in order to simplify this a bit, let's just assume that the price the customer pays on new sales will be recognized immediately. Next, we need to forecast FSD sales through 2021. And to do that, we really need a forecast of new vehicle sales. These figures are the latest publicly available forecast from Troy Testlike. Troy is estimating 181,000 for Q4 and just under 800,000 for 2021. I personally think these numbers are a bit too low, but in the interest of providing a neutral analysis, let's use these figures for now. Next, let's talk take rate. I've laid out the case for a 35% take rate as of Q3, but the $2,000 price increase might bring that down a bit. Since the last price increase occurred after the start of Q4, it seems probable to me that there would be a higher take rate before that new price and a lower one thereafter, but I'm assuming that will normalize out to a 33% rate for the quarter. I further assume that holds steady through the first half of 2021, as improved functionality, and therefore perceived customer value, offsets price increases of $1,000 per quarter. Now things get interesting. We haven't discussed this in detail yet, but Elon has indicated that Tesla will start offering FSD as a subscription next year. This is incredibly exciting, since it will broaden the pool of FSD customers and create a rapidly growing, recurring source of high margin revenue. This is another misunderstood opportunity at Tesla, and I'll do a video on this at some point. If you're interested in learning more about the potential, I'll post a link in the description to a case study on FSD subscriptions from Dutch company Mr. Green. But for purposes of the current analysis, it's safe to assume that introduction of a subscription offering will lower the take rate of FSD as a purchase option. 
So I'm projecting a drop to 25% take rate on new sales, but that 15% of new sales will instead opt to subscribe to FSD at a price of $250 per month. This broadens the overall take rate to 40%, which seems about right to me. We also know that many individuals in the upgrade candidate pool are waiting for this new subscription rather than shelling out $10,000 all at once for the upgrade. Tesla has a lot of levers it could pull, such as a one month free FSD trial, to try to hook customers on the upgrade. For this reason, I'm assuming 15% of the upgrade candidate pool will try the subscription once it becomes available. Now for the fun part. Running all the math, as described above, gets to a staggering $5 billion of FSD revenue through the end of 2021, or $1 billion per quarter on average. By Q4 2020, the run rate would be $1.2 billion and rising rapidly. Again, these are not my hopes and wishes as a Tesla investor, but what I feel are middle of the road or potentially even conservative projections based on detailed thinking around the individual assumptions. If FSD is truly as compelling as the beta videos make it out to be, this might just be the new must-have tech product. I could see take rates of 50% or higher if the combination of safety, convenience, and robotaxi are recognized by consumers. I truly think this technology will also be seen as a new kind of luxury, and could also be responsible for attracting car buyers who might not otherwise be interested in a Tesla. Simply put, nothing else will compare to a Tesla with FSD, at least for the next several years. This one earnings stream alone, if my numbers are correct, equates on an earnings per share basis to the entire Wall Street consensus earnings estimate of $4.76 over the next five quarters. This gives me confidence, once again, that Wall Street has continued to improperly analyze Tesla's financial position, and they will be struggling to update their EPS and price targets as Tesla continues to post earnings well above Wall Street consensus. If you think this is valuable content, please consider supporting Spark Spread on Patreon, or just hit like and subscribe. Some levels of support will get early access to my Tesla earnings forecasts, as well as the detailed valuation series I've been working on. Also, if you are interested in learning more about FSD as a subscription, or the potential of Teslas to appreciate in value, I'll be covering those topics and much more in an upcoming video, so be on the lookout for that. Thanks so much for watching, I'm Matt Smith, and this is Spark Spread.